Hello everybody, Gliderman here. So today uh, I'm doing a little tutorial on how to use Sheepit Render Farm uh, with Blender. Um, now to give a brief explanation of what Sheepit is, it's a free distributed render farm um, for Blender uh, users to do or use or whatever um, that allows you to basically distribute your blend files to other people for them to render. And it's really nice and pretty seamless. So basically, the main point of this is, instead of having one computer render a pro your project for 100 days, it's 100 computers rendering your project for one day. And uh, they have a credit-based system where the more that you render other people's projects, the, basically the higher ranking you will be in the render queue. Um, because there's quite a few. And if we just go to status up here, um, you can see at least at the time of this recording, uh, like this is the past couple frame, a uh, couple hours uh, or days or something, I can't remember, um, that they've been rendering. And so like here they had like around 12 or 14,000, then it spiked up here, somebody added stuff. But anyway, um, so it's uh, pretty simple to help out. You just go to the getting started and it basically just asks you to trust it to uh, run the Java application um, where it d then downloads Blender and handles all the uh, projects and that kind of thing. What we're going to be doing today, um, since I already have uh, quite a few credits, I've been helping out a little bit here um, for uh, also for my projects to render. Um, so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working to send our own jobs to Sheepit. And I know uh, there's a couple of Sheepit tutorials already out there. However, none of them really seem to be in English, which was kind of necessary for me when I was learning how to use Sheepit. And so that's why I'm creating this and passing this knowledge on to you. Um, so it, as you can see in the background, I've got uh, Blender open uh, with a little simple project that I created. Um, so let's go check that out. Go over here. And so uh, this is uh, one of the frames. Uh, I'm doing it at 1080p with uh, 100 samples. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, for the export, I'm doing it in RGB with uh, 16 bits of color death. So uh, one of the important things when using Sheepit is as this is distributed and not actually able to combine everything together, uh, what you have to do is you have to set it to use PNGs, or I think G JPEGs are also support um, as well. Um, but anyway, so make sure you have that, and you shouldn't need to worry about the output directory or anything like that. Um, though override these settings uh, on whatever client computer is rendering, uh, which is quite nice. Um, I think also in the performance, I think they'll set it to like 256 by 256 if somebody is rendering it on a GPU, and I think 32 by 32 on a CPU. Um, and we'll cover that a little bit later. Um, so I'm just going to press escape over here just to show you this little project. Um, so it's at 30 frames per second, and it's just uh, a little pan of the uh, monkey head there, Suzanne. Um, and this is in cycles there, as you can see. And there's a quick little tour of the scene. It's not much. That's the entire point. It's supposed to be pretty simple. And so uh, you want to make sure that you've saved your project. I already have in this case. And then we're going to pop back over to Sheepit. You will need to uh, register in order to submit jobs. And I believe also to render. Um, so uh, I can show you that real quick if we just log out. And then uh, we're just going to go to register real quick. Um, it's not much information that they request. Um, just uh, a username for you to use, a password, confirm the password, and an email address. And what they'll do is they'll actually email you uh, little messages saying, hey, your thing is now started rendering. Hey, your thing is now done rendering. Um, so that you don't need to be constantly monitoring it. Let's just say you're taking a couple days to render something. You don't need to worry about that. So now um, I'm going to go and sign back in, and you uh, would probably want to uh, register.
So now that I'm signed into Sheepit, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just click on Projects here, and then we're going to click on Add a Project. And so this will bring you to this page where uh, you're going to be able to choose a file. However, uh, I highly suggest you read through these uh, requirements, kind of. I mean, it's things that you should be aware of. Uh, whether or not it's a compatible render engine, uh, they recommend that you keep the render time uh, reasonably low so that people can at least reasonably do your renders. I mean, if you were taking 10 hours per frame, that would be a bit ridiculous. And uh, while the people would get a lot of credits, there's also the potential that somebody's not going to have their computer running sheep it for a 10-hour continuous span. And it's very unlikely that yours would actually get rendered. Uh, they recommend keeping your number of frames short and obviously no nudity or racist content. I mean, that's kind of obvious. Uh, some of you may be using scripts and those are disabled. Uh, so uh, here it'll also display how many credits you have and uh, what waiting list number you'll be. Uh, there is a maximum file size. However, I haven't come anywhere close to that. Uh, I think the highest I've gotten was like 70 megabytes. And that was a fairly large world. So we're just going to click Choose File, and that's going to bring down a little drop-down selector. So I'm just going to navigate to Mine, and then there's Test.Blend. I'm going to choose, and then I'm going to click uh, Send This File. And so this will take, depending on your uh, internet speed and whatnot, uh, this will take a little bit of time for it to upload. However, it looks like this was pretty dang quick. Uh, what we're going to do, or you can choose uh, which Blender version you want to uh, have the render nodes uh, use. Uh, I recommend the latest, but if you have a, something that requires uh, an earlier version, like uh, for instance you were using Stars, you may wish to use an earlier version. Uh, I think it was 2.70 that removed Stars. I'm not completely sure. But anyway. Uh, Right now, I'm going to disable the renderable by all members, and uh, I'll explain that a little bit later. Uh, you can choose uh, what frames uh, to start and end the animation. You can see down here, I start from 1 and go to 250, so we're going with that. You can split the frame into four tiles, however, that will disable comp compositing nodes uh, in your project, which will basically say, you can break up each scene into four different parts, and that can be faster. It depends. Uh, you don't really have to worry about the advanced settings unless you want, like, uh, well, actually, this is kind of an important one. But uh, if you want, like, a prepender, uh, so we can just say uh, test and then underscore, uh, that'll prepend that. Uh, so you can all, you, should you be using more than a gigabyte of memory when you're rendering? Not necessarily this uh, 15 megabytes here, which is of your scene, but when you're rendering, uh, if you're using more than a gigabyte, you certainly want to put that in because I've had a number of projects that I've been rendering from other people where they didn't put that in and I only have a gig of RAM on my GPU and it was crashing it and crashing it. You definitely want to make sure that you have that entered if you're using more than a gig. Other than that, don't need to worry about it. So let's just click add this job. And then it's going to say, hey, it's added. So we just go to the administration panel. And uh, obviously it'll display this warning saying, hey, it's private. Nobody can really use it. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the GPU because this is a cycles uh, based project. Uh, we can do that. If you're using the Blender internal, you can't. Uh, and then we're also going to disable the CPU. And the reason for this is because the people that render using a CPU are not as reliable as the people that have a GPU. I don't know why, it just appears to be the case for me. And uh, I found it much easier just to disable the CPU entirely when you're using cycles and go with that and just go with the GPU only. Um, obviously, if you're using the Blender internal, you can't really do that. Um, but like for the CPU, I've had some frames take like three hours when they really don't take three hours on like even my computer and that's a like a computer from 2009. 
it can be a little bit finicky. So uh, now we're just gonna say, everybody can render this scene now, which will say, okay, everybody who has a GPU can now uh, render this. And uh, probably fairly shortly, uh, we'll start to see them come in. So if we just reload that real quick, you can see these blue portions are uh, two frames that are being rendered. So all of these squares are a frame and we obviously have 250 of them. So uh, with this blue one, uh, Scafander, I don't know how to say that, but uh, they're rendering one and then, oh, well, they're rendering both of them. But anyway, so uh, they would be rendering both of those there. You can see the blue is in progress and then you can figure out, you know, from reading the rest of those. Uh, and there will probably be more coming in. So yeah, now you can see we have a lot going in. So if we just go to projects and then we scroll all, all the way down to the bottom, you can see uh, we've got three frames done. Oh, wow, that was pretty quick. And uh, there's nine frames uh, currently rendering and it's, it's gonna be done in 10 minutes. So uh, you can also click on it here. However, I will note if we go back real quick, I obviously cannot click on somebody else's project to go to their administration panel. You can only click on yours. So you can see uh, we've got these green frames, quite a few, looks like six, uh, done now. So we can also hover over them and you can see a little preview window and you can see like what people were using in this instance, somebody was using a GTX 970 and it only took 21 seconds. Ah, oh, that's nice. Um, or you can also click on C frames and you can see uh, a number of those frames. And once it gets to a certain point, it will only show uh, every 10 frames uh, that are actually rendered. So uh, anyway, uh, we'll jump ahead to when this is finished. Okay, so now Sheepit is done rendering. Uh, you can see uh, some statistics about it. Uh, you can see it really only took 17 minutes to render and it did an hour and 43 minutes worth of rendering, which is awesome. That's nice and fast. And uh, we can also view some statistics about the render here. And you can kind of see uh, like kind of how the frame progression went. And then down here, uh, there's a pie chart of all the different users and what percentage they contributed. And uh, we can also click here and see frames uh, and it says, you know, only one every 10 frames is shown. And so you can scroll through here and make sure there's uh, no issues uh, there. And then what you wanna do is you wanna click get archive frame and that'll start a download here. And now we're just gonna wait for that to download real quick. Uh, depending on how your compression is, like you can see over here, I've got this at 15%. Uh, if that was like at 100, the file size would be a little bit smaller and it would download probably a little bit quicker because it would be a smaller image, etc. cetera. Um, and in the future, I would recommend cranking the compression up all the way because uh, if we just pop over to Blender, uh, you can see uh, 100 is maximum lossless compression. And while it has slow file output in comparison with uh, how long it takes to actually render uh, the 100% uh, lossless compression is kind of the better way to go uh, when we're talking about sheep. So now we're just going to wait for that to download. Okay, so now the project is all downloaded and that's all good. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're actually just going to remove this project from uh, Sheepit so that they don't have to store it uh, for really any longer than they really need to. Uh, so we're just going to click remove the project. Uh, and it's going to pop up a warning saying, are you sure you want to do this? You can't undo that. And you're going to probably want to click OK because uh, we're done with that project. And then we can just close that window. So now back in Blender, uh, we obviously need to combine these uh, PNGs that we generated through Sheepit. So the easiest way to do this is to click on this little button up here and then go to video editing. And this is a default uh, thing in Blender uh, default setup for your Windows. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this from this to file browser. And uh, what I'm probably going to do is blur out most of it, but uh, this would be your file browser up here and I'm going to just drag that down. So I'm going to go to my downloads and then my test and then uh, let's see if I can get rid of that sidebar. Okay, so there we go. 
So you can see there's all of these images uh, that we've got there. What you want to do is you want to go to add and then uh, we're going to go to image and then we're just going to select all of those images and add image strip. And there we go. So now we've got uh, this big nice strip of all of our images and I'm just going to, because I accidentally moved my uh, playhead, I'm going to just press shift S and then I'll snap it to there. And so now if we just play, well playback is a little bit slow, but uh, we can click through and we can see uh, our animation. And now uh, what we want to do is we want to set this up for exporting uh, out. So we're just going to drag this corner out and we're going to change this to properties. And then uh, here you can see everything there. Uh, and here you want to change your frame rate. Uh, I recommend, uh, these are my personal settings, but uh, I recommend an MPEG RGB with uh, an encoding uh, of QuickTime and uh, let's see here, H.264. And then uh, this I find to be pretty reliable and uh, small file size. And it also, I believe, plays on everything uh, that supports the QuickTime format, which is pretty standard. Um, however, if you have a personal uh, feud with Apple, maybe you don't want to use QuickTime, but whatever. Uh, so I'm going to change this bitrate to 3000, and that's just to uh, save on the file size that will be exported. Uh, it's really up to you. If you were using audio, I recommend AAC and then leaving it at the default bitrate. But since we don't have any audio in this uh, portion, I'm not going to worry about that. And then uh, here you would select uh, your output directory. Um, and then you would just scroll up and hit animation. So I'm going to select the output directory and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I selected the output directory and now we're just going to do an animation. And that will uh, start to render together all of these PNGs and uh, combine them into a movie file. Because, I mean, playing a bunch of PNGs is kind of a boring task. Uh, so let's just click that. And there we go. So now that Blender is done rendering that, um, it took a little bit longer than I was expecting due to the fact that uh, the file sizes for the image were so large. But uh, if you had been smart uh, and from the beginning uh, did the 100% uh, compression, then uh, it probably would have gone a little bit faster. But whatever. Mistakes happen, so uh, we'll just roll with that. So, uh, if we just pop over, so this is the movie that it rendered. So if we just play through that, uh, you can see it's all now nice and, at least I think, reasonably smooth. Uh, it does look like we've got a little bit of fuzziness uh, right around here. Uh, but other than that, uh, it looks pretty dang good. So that's how you can use Sheep It to render stuff much faster. Um, just to recap. This was just a quick little animation that would have taken probably over two hours to render on this computer, but we got it rendered out uh, in 17 minutes using Sheepit, and then we combined it into this uh, short little movie here, and uh, everything's all good to go. Uh, so I hope this was useful for you guys, and uh, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure to subscribe to the channel, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.